All right, this is uh, lesson, uh, grade one, module four, lesson 21. And this lesson really is a whole lot like lesson 19, lesson 20, where students are going to be reading word problems. And the real focus of these lessons, 19, 20, and 21, is to learn how to model that word problem using tape diagrams. And then once that problem has been modeled, for students to look back at that model and recognize whether that model can be uh, solved or the word problem can be solved using addition, subtraction, sometimes both. So the real focus of this lesson, much like the previous two lessons, is on model drawing, drawing that tape diagram. Because this is the third lesson, I'm really going to go fast. I'm just going to show you and quickly talk through one example uh, for each problem, keeping in mind that most models, there's a variety of different ways a, one problem can be drawn. All of them are equally good. Um, I'm just going to show one example per problem. So let's get started. So Fatima has 12 colored pencils in her bag and she has six regular pencils too. And then the question is how many pencils does she have? All right, so let's model this and I'm going to say um, Fatima has 12 colored pencils in her bag. So I'm going to draw that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So there are her colored pencils. And then it says she also has six regular pencils. So I'm going to draw 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And so here, is her regular pencil. So we've got colored pencils here, we've got regular pencils here, and then the question is asking how many pencils does she have, as in all together. So one thing I might do is I might say colored, and then I would say regular is our labels. I might also say here is 12, and here is 6. And then the last thing I would say is I would put the question mark here showing that we're trying to find the total. Keep in mind, this is not the only possible way the model could be drawn, but it's certainly one example. Julio swam uh, seven laps in the morning. In the afternoon, he swam some more laps, so we don't know that number. And then it says he swam a total of 14 laps. So the big question that we're supposed to figure out is um, how many laps did he swim in the afternoon? So there is our big question right there. So the idea is we're going we're gonna to model this, right? And so let's go back and we're going to read this. Julio swam seven laps in the morning. So I'm going to draw in the morning. Now the idea, well, let's do that morning right here and he drew and he swam seven laps so one two three four five six seven so there is our morning and then it says in the afternoon he swam some more laps so there's our our two characters morning and afternoon and so in this one we don't know how many he swam uh, so that's going to be our blank so I'm going to go back and I'm going to fill the, the label in. This is morning and this is afternoon. And then he swam a total of 14 laps. So that means putting these two guys together is equal to 14. Now I can go back in and say, well, the morning was 7. And do we know what the afternoon was? No, so there's our question mark. And so here's one example of what the model would look like. And parents and teachers, what I want you to notice is how many times I keep going back to the question, reading it, adding a little to the model, going back, reading the question, going back, adding a little bit to the model. And I'm not filling in the model in any particular order um, because it doesn't matter the order of how we fill in the tape diagram as long as that tape diagram is accurately modeled by the end. So let's move on. So Peter, Peter built eight, 18 models. He built 13 airplanes and some cars. All right. 
then the question is, how many car models did he build? So there's our big question right there. How many car models did he build? Now, if you want to think about characters in this one, another way to model this is the more official Singapore method is you label airplanes in this case, you identify the character, and in this case it's airplanes and cars. And the idea is we're going to indicate that airplanes is some number and cars is some number. And the neat thing is it doesn't matter if these lengths are the same or if they're different or if they're accurate even. We just want to get them represented. Now we're going to go back and so Peter built some airplanes, he built some cars. Now do we know the number of airplanes? Yeah, he built 13 of them. So I'm going to write 13. Do we know how many cars? No, we don't. So we could do a question mark here. And then, but we do know the total. We know that the total is 18. So I can model it like this, 18. So here's another way you can model this um, question. Uh, this is using a, two separate tape diagrams. This is very much in line with the Singapore technique uh, called the Singapore bar model is often what they call it. Now, we didn't have to do it this way. I'm going to shrink that down. More classic way to do it, airplanes, cars, and then 13 is the airplane, so I'm going to put 13 here. Cars is the question mark, and then the total is right here, and that's 18. So this is a more classic, more traditional way of modeling this question, but I just wanted to point out the two, there are two common ways. This way is more like the Singapore method. This way is what's really being advocated right now in the Eureka Math book. And the last one, Kiana found some shells at the beach. And so she found some shells at the beach. She gave eight shells to her brother, and now she has nine left. And so the big old question is, how many shells did Kiana find at the beach? So that's our big question right now, is how many did she find? So she found some shells. So we technically, we don't know how many shells she found. But she gave some, and she kept some. So let's, let's indicate those. So the ones that she gave, that equals eight. So she gave eight to her brother, all right? And then she kept some. She kept some, and how many did she keep? She kept nine. So we have these two pieces. We have the gave portion and the kept portion. And the question is, how many shells did she have at the beach? You know, how many did she find at the beginning? So the big question mark would go right here, the total. And that wraps up just the third in a series of lessons, uh, first grade module four, lesson 21, where we continue drawing those tape diagrams and using that resulting tape diagram to recognize how to solve the problem.